These are the first ever images from a brand new telescope called the Vera C. Rubin Observatory. This telescope is quite remarkable. It will survey the entire southern sky from atop a mountain in Chile, discovering millions of asteroids and supernovae, seeing distant galaxies for the first time, and creating an ultra-wide, ultra-high definition movie of the night sky. The amount of data it will collect each year will be staggering. In fact, each night it will be staggering. In its first year alone though, it will collect more data than all other optical telescopes, both on the ground and in space combined. The telescope, Vera Rubin, is now ready to start its mission, and we're seeing the first ever images from it right now. We've kind of seen two images, but to call it just that really undersells what we're getting. These images are enormous, and in higher resolution than your screen or our eyes can process without zooming in a lot. So let's get into these images and the telescope itself. Let's look at the images first, and along the way we can talk about the telescope itself and the amazing mission that it's on. A mission that will see it scan the entire sky in the southern hemisphere every single night for 10 years. This first image here shows a southern region of the Virgo cluster of galaxies. It's the closest cluster of galaxies to us, at around 55 million light years away. Already there is so much to look at. The spiral galaxies right of centre are the obvious place to start, with their almost perfect spiral arms spinning in unison, and the bright blue colours, suggesting a lot of young stars are present here. Above the spirals are a gorgeous trio of galaxies all interacting and merging. These galaxies are yellower, and we can see tidal tails of dust and gas being thrown out as the three galaxies interact in a gravitational clash. I said earlier that it's a bit unfair to reduce this down to a single image, or two images in a second, and that's because this is just a small snapshot of the full image we got. What we're looking at here is much smaller than the Rubin Observatory's complete field of view. That's the amount of space it can look at in one go. Let's zoom out, revealing the full extent of Rubin's first cosmic treasure chest. This complete image contains about 10 million galaxies, shot in a resolution higher than our eyes can take in. Hence why we started so zoomed in, so that we could actually enjoy the details of those galaxies better. In fact, each Rubin image is so good that it would require a wall of 400 Ultra HD TVs to display it in a resolution that our eyes can actually take in in full detail. And each exposure from the telescope covers a patch of sky 45 times larger than the full moon covers. That's 10 square degrees for any astronomers out there. Other than the spirals we focused on, there are countless other galaxies too, and a few objects that aren't galaxies as well. These bluish balls with four red spikes around them, for example. These are actually stars inside our own Milky Way galaxy, much, much, much closer than any of the galaxies that we can see behind them. The red spikes aren't real things, though. They're artifacts made by the shape and design of the telescope and its mirrors, and they appear around the brightest objects in the image. In fact, some of the stars even have sort of red donuts around them too, like this one. Like the spikes, this is caused by the unique mirror setup inside Rubin. The observatory has an enormous 8.4 meter primary mirror, allowing it to capture a huge amount of light from even the faintest, most distant galaxies. It's a unique design, combining two mirrors into one surface. Light first hits the outer surface of that mirror. It bounces up to a 3.4 meter secondary mirror, then back down to the 5 meter inner surface, or the tertiary mirror, and then through a series of three lenses, where light is focused onto a surface and then sent to the largest camera ever built. Yeah, just casually dropping in that this telescope has the largest camera in the world, which is how we get single images with 3200 megapixel resolution of distant galaxies. This mirror design though leads to those red donuts around the brightest stars. There are struts here holding up the secondary mirror that needed to hold it still and in place, and those give us the red spikes around the stars. If you want more details on how those struts cause spikes around stars, then I have an entire video about JWST's unique spikes, and all the details are in there and it's the same thing here. So check that out if you want to know more, link in the description of this video. Before we get to the second image though, I want to show you this picture. 
showing part of that massive image of the Virgo cluster that we've been looking at. Every named object and galaxy has been labeled here with its name. That is a lot of stuff that's been labeled, but notice that almost every faint speck of light, each of which is a galaxy, is not labeled. That's because they don't have names yet, and that in turn is because this is the first time we've ever observed most of these objects. Over the 10 years of Rubin's primary mission, we expect it to image 10 billion galaxies. That's more galaxies than people on the planet, so we could all have one and still have plenty left over. This will be the first time in human history we've seen more galaxies than people. What's pretty amazing is that imaging distant galaxies isn't the only thing that this telescope is incredible at doing. It's also incredible at discovering supernovae, that's exploding stars, both in the Milky Way and in other more distant galaxies. And it's amazing at discovering asteroids orbiting the Sun too. Both of these are because it's constantly imaging the southern sky over and over again taking a thousand 30 second images every night. When you're doing that, you're gonna notice changes. While stars do move, they move very slowly, whereas asteroids move across the sky much more quickly. They move so fast that in Rubin images, they're just streaks of red, green, and blue light in the exposures, which also makes them really easy to remove in processed images. And that's why those photobombers weren't leaving streaks all over those main images released here. The first pictures we're looking at were taken over about 10 hours of testing time with the telescope. And in that data, we've already discovered 2,104 brand new asteroids, seven of which are classified as near Earth objects. But luckily, none of them have any likelihood of hitting the Earth. The new ones are shown here in light blue. Those dark blue objects are the million or so asteroids we already knew about in our solar system. During the 10 years of Rubin's primary mission, which is going to be called the Legacy Survey of Space and Time, LSST, we'll discover at least another 5 million, and in fact, probably many more than that. The other things that we can see changing over time are the brightness of stars. These can be so-called variable stars that naturally pulse in brightness over time, as we can see from some of the examples here. It can actually be hard to see that pulsing by eye, but the algorithms used to analyze the images can see these changes very easily. More dramatically, we can also see supernovae, stars exploding in incredibly bright bursts of light that can outshine the entire galaxy they live in. These explosions can dim within weeks, and often we just miss them. But here, we're surveying the sky every night, so we're going to catch many more of these explosions. So we should hear about many more supernova discoveries in the next 10 years. Now though, let's head to that second image. This bright, dusty landscape showing two nebulae. In the top right, we have an object called the Triffid Nebula, shown in blue surrounding a pale pink core. The much bigger pink object, which is covering much of the center of the image, is called the Lagoon Nebula. Both of these nebulae are enormous clouds of space dust and gas, and they tend to be some of the most stunning and captivating objects imaged by these massive telescopes. There is so much detail and texture in these objects. Stars of all different colors are visible, hot gas streaming away from some of those stars, and thick clouds of dark dust that block out all light coming from behind. Unlike JWST, which is an infrared telescope that can penetrate dust very well, Vera Rubin is an optical or visible light telescope, meaning thick clouds like this can block a lot more light from reaching the telescope. This particular image combines 678 separate exposures from the Vera C. Rubin Observatory, accounting for about seven hours of observing time. To enjoy these images in full, there is a link to zoomable versions online in the description, and this allows you to explore them in your own time in as much detail as you like. That detail comes from that massive camera we mentioned earlier, which is about the size of a small car, and which will produce 20 terabytes of data per night, leading to about 500 petabytes produced over the 10-year LSST primary mission. So strap in for many more cool images and great science being done. Thanks a lot for watching. I would love it if you'd hit that subscribe button down there if you enjoyed this. It's totally free for you and hopefully means you'll see more of my videos in the future. And also, please feel free to leave me any questions you have about this down below as well. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.